Hello, I'm Nan Simonson, and today I'm going to share a recipe that I love from somebody I admire tremendously, a blogger and a food recipe creator, Tammy of Nutmeg Notebook. You can find their videos. She and her husband, Tom, um, do a beautiful job. I learned how to use the Breville hot air oven from her as well as Chef AJ. I learned how to um, uh, chop a salad from Tammy. And I have a chopped salad every day and she has a great video on chopped salad as well. And I have one, um, but not as uh, complete as hers. And you can look at my website, Nan Simonson. Uh, dot com. You can also look at Nan and then a space Simonson on YouTube and find the rest of my videos. So I'm going to do a recipe of hers and I'm not going to amend it. The first time I made it, I played. I always play with recipes, but I decided today I'll do it exactly the way she has it. Well, it's not exactly. There's just one change and um, I'll be able to see the difference. I made this and I doubled it and it worked just fine being doubled just before Thanksgiving when I had my family here for Thanksgiving um, brunch and I have an eight and 11 year old uh, grandson. None of them are vegan. I am whole food plant-based. I'll say whole food plant-based instead of vegan because vegan can connote anything including Oreos and Cokes, um, they are vegan, but whole food plant-based means it's plant-based, no animal product at all, but also whole food. I, you will see in my recipes that I seldom use any at all oil, no white sugar, and a little bit of salt. And I aim for the closest to nature as we can get. So to sweeten this, Tammy and her recipe did exactly what I love, which is she used dates. That's a whole food and they're sweet enough. Let me get started. So I'm making pumpkin spice oat muffins and I made them for the family for the Thanksgiving brunch. The kids love them. We love them. I like to, the option is to make them as muffins and make them as cookies. Well, and, and there's no difference because they don't rise any differently. They're no different uh, in density. The difference is the amount of um, food that we're getting. In a muffin pan, it's about a half a cup. In a cookie, at least with the scoop I use, it's a quarter of a cup. When I want this as a snack, I'm usually only going to eat one of them. I may put a little bit of nut butter on it, have it with a cup of tea, as a dessert or a late afternoon snack, if dinner's going to be a bit later, and it's so delicious and highly nutritious. It's like eating a bowl of oatmeal. Um, maybe a little sweeter because I don't put any sweetener at all in my oatmeal. I simply have chopped up banana in there. And um, anyway, okay. So I'm gonna start using my, with my food process or with my blender by putting in very, very ripe banana. So I always buy a bunch of bananas and wait <laughs> with bated breath for that part of the bunch that hasn't been eaten. I sort of forbid them from being eaten. Uh, that turns almost black. The skin is very, very dark because I want a super sweet product. And that's what happens when bananas sit around a while. And your recipe tells you quantities, and I, I have been keeping these. I even finally put them in the refrigerator so they wouldn't rot. And you can see how when I mash them, they're really quite liquid. I'm putting in unsweetened applesauce, another um, flavor of fruit, but also to add sweetness. I'm putting in six medule dates. Medule dates are the biggest... <laughs> reconstructing this one, are the biggest, most moist of the dates. There's something called um, neglette noir, but it's smaller and it's more dense. I like the medule. 
and I buy them organic either from Trader Joe's or from Costco. So I'm putting in six. Tammy said you could put in more if you want it sweeter. Well, I think the more sweet we have things, the more sweet we want them. And even with this, if I eat this too often, I want them too badly. And I want to want an apple, a nectarine, a persimmon. I like the Fuyu persimmons um, that are, uh, I eat crunchy like an apple. I don't want to want sweet things. So that's just my choice. And I'm putting in a can, this is, an or this is organic, of pumpkin puree. I like this brand, the Farmer's Market brand that doesn't have PBA in their lining. Although, you know what? I mean, as often as I can, I don't use canned food, but I use plenty of canned food, like some of my beans, even though I make a lot of my own um, beans from dry bean, uh, from the state of being a dry bean and then cooking, soaking it and then putting it in my, um, instant pot and cooking them that way and then just putting them in one draining them putting them in one gallon bags and freezing them and they just break apart and you can put them for example garbanzo beans I'll use a cup and a half for my homemade hummus that I make every week and the recipes on my um, website and I can make a lot of those bags and put them in the freezer um, or I'll make beans and put plenty of broth plenty of water with broth for the broth as well as a lot of seasoning and I'll use that in containers three or five cup containers to use for another meal so enough talking I'm going to and I, I'm, I'm sorry about the sound um, I know it's annoying but this is my Vitamix and because of the Vitamix I can or with the Vitamix especially, I can do the dates and they will pulverize. Um, in a lesser blender, that it may struggle a little bit. how thoroughly, oh, it smells so good, how thoroughly that blended. So what did I have? Applesauce, pumpkin, dates, and um, banana. Now, I'm gonna use this same base because I bought a Vitamix uh, relatively recently that would allow me, I went online to see which one they had, the base, and I, moved out my other Vitamix because I found out that they made a food processor that would fit on a Vitamix base. And I had had my Vitamix for 20 years, 25 years, and so I didn't feel too guilty and I gave it to someone who could really use it because that base was still as strong as can be. Um, but I love doing what I just did and now I have a new machine. What am I going to do with that? Oh, you know what? Oh, this is so funny. I'm thinking of another recipe. I'm not going to mix it in the Vitamix. I mean, in a food processor. I'm going to do it by hand. So we're not going to do this. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> but you got to see something because I just recently did a recipe. I think I even filmed it where I did exactly this. I used this to mix a base of a sauce and then that to mix a, um, the more solid materials, but that's not gonna happen here. So what I am gonna do though, is get out a glass bowl because you pour, in most recipes, you pour the liquid into the solid. So I have here um, steel cut oats. And steel cut oats are the oat groat, which looks a lot like a wheat berry, ground into a more, uh, well, into, they're like little pyramids. It's just chopped up with steel blades. But this is an instant version so that they will, 
be more palatable in a mixture of dry and wet without being cooked per se in a pot of water or milk the way oats are. So in order to get instant oats, see you can buy them. Tom's Red Mill sells instant oats, but they're not organic and I want organic oats um, because unfortunately oats are heavily sprayed with a desiccant and in this case the desiccant is quite often glyphosate which is Roundup and a desiccant helps dry grains and prevent mold. Well, uh, let them do it the old fashioned way. I don't want them to spray it with something that's going to wreck my microbiome and I don't think any of us want that. So my oats, I want organic, but also they have to be gluten free. Well, oats by nature are gluten free, but not if they're processed in a plant that grinds wheat and barley and farro those are uh, and rye, those are all glutinous grains. And if you mix it up, you're going to get the materials from one into another. And I'm very sensitive to gluten. So I have ground my own. I simply bought steel cut oats, organic, put them in the Vitamix. Actually, before I made this, I didn't even wash it out. I just kind of tapped it to get the dust of this out and then just put in these ingredients. So I have steel cut oats for their crunch. I have rolled oats, which have more density um, and a different texture. I have some flax seed. And flax seed works in a, as a dry ingredient in, an, in most recipes as a, um, as, as an egg substitute, but usually the flax is mixed with a liquid. So this is rather different. As I said, this is different than the first time I made this recipe. I'm going to see what I think of it. It's her recipe, I'm sure I'm gonna love it. It's one of their favorite family, one of the, yeah, the family's favorite recipes. Um, this is a half a cup of quinoa the recipe calls for quinoa flakes. Well, I didn't have quinoa flakes, and so I used um, quinoa and um, ground it in the blender. Now, here's the tricky part of quinoa. Quinoa needs to be rinsed unless you buy it rinsed um, because it has something called a saponin that is a... It's a, the way, the plant's way of protecting itself from insects and it's hard on our stomach. And so we normally would be rinsing that. Well, I rinse them, I dried them, let them drain in a colander and dry and then I ground them. Um, you can also buy, and I believe the quinoa at, at Costco when you buy it in the big bag is um, already rinsed. I believe it says right on the package, rinsed. All right. And I'm simply mixing this with a whisk and I'm adding some vanilla powder. You can buy vanilla as an extract. It usually has alcohol mixed with it as a stabilizer. Some um, brands, they, and there's something else instead of the alcohol, but this is wild vanilla powder this is wildly expensive. I think this little bag was $25, but it'll last me a long, long time. I'm only using a half a teaspoon and it's stronger and it's more true to the vanilla bean. It's fabulous, it's excellent, so I use it. But especially in a recipe like this, as opposed to a little latte, plant-based milk latte, where you really taste the vanilla, you could easily go with conventional vanilla and be just fine. But I have the vanilla powder in here. You can see it, it's the dark brown. And I have um, pumpkin uh, spice. This is simply organic, it's pumpkin spice. You could put this together yourself. Cinnamon, ginger, nutmeg, and cloves. That's what a pumpkin spice is. I have a recipe for pumpkin pie. And I believe the pie doesn't use the cloves, but I use this anyway. 
I had some oatmeal this morning. I put it directly on my oatmeal. It was really nice. So it's, it's worth buying. Trader Joe's has one. I bought that. Um, but it wasn't gluten. I mean, it wasn't um, organic. And I chose this one when I went back. And what I'm adding, Tammy used a half a cup of golden raisins or chocolate chips or currants. And I am instead mixing, and this is almost a cup, uh, the vegan dark chocolate chips and chopped pecan. I like that combination. So I'm going to, well, I'll put this in here now because I don't want to over mix this. And then I'm gonna pour in our liquid. Probably I should be stirring while I'm doing this, but I can't, I can't handle all of that. So I love these um, spatulas. What are they called? Um, uh, Tavolo, T-E-V-O-L-O. -O. I saw them spoken of on Dr. Esselstyn's, Esselstyn's wife and Esselstyn and Jane, his daughter's channel, cooking channel. Anne was going on and on about them. I bought them, I love them, and I've bought three sets. You kind of have to be careful of using them. They fit really well. When you're blending something, you'll slice the tip off. It's only uh, silicone, and silicone's great when you're using it with food, hot or cold, because it doesn't transfer chemical elements like plastic with hot or food products. But I like this because I can get into these little nooks and crannies because, gosh forbid, I miss anything here of value, right? I'm going to tap just a second and get this. Okay, done. All right. I wish you could smell this. It's, of course, spicy smelling. I can't swear I smell the vanilla. But I'm going to mix the dry with the wet. And then I'll show you what I'm going to do. I really just want to make the cookie size, the two ounce, that's liquid ounce size, rather than the eight ounce, which is a half cup. No, that's not true. Four ounce as opposed to the eight ounce. Um, However, I'm going to I'm going to make three muffins just to show you so that when I photograph the end result, you'll be able to see the end result um, in the photo attached to the video. I don't want to mix too much, but with this nice uh, strong spatula, this is a Tupperware spatula, silicone and resilient to heavy batters. I think uh, there we go. I just don't want to beat it to death. Okay, I think this is great. This is a moist, dense um, cookie. It's more like, what would I call it? Well, moist, dense cookie. And I use this quarter cup ice cream scoop. They also have a half a cup ice cream scoop, but I don't want to do that. That would be a big mound. But I'll put a big spoonful of the um, batter into my silicone muffin pans. And um, you know what I'm going to do? I don't want to have to use my fingers. And you know what? I just said that and yet, that one scoop, so maybe my muffin pan isn't a half a cup muffin pan. Well, I just discovered something. So I'm gonna go on and fill my muffin pan. And then I'll do my cookies. So she must have had a much larger muffin pan. I love the silicone because I don't have to grease it I can simply, um, when it's finished, push them out by doing this, kind of um, 
pushing the bottom up through the top. Get this done. And then I'll show you what I, I'll just start with the cookies. And you don't need to watch me do them all, but it's basically the same thing. And the, they're just simply mounded. That's the difference. It's nice to have a muffin shape because with a muffin shape, you have a straight side. And the straight side allows you to cut it in half. I like to cut it in half and then I can put a little bit of either nut butter. I like a mango chutney as a little something to put on. My husband likes to put a little bit of honey on it. I think that's enough now. Okay, I'll straighten these up a little bit off camera rather than wasting your time. Uh, it's also a good idea to let these settle and in order to do the cookies, you can see there's a lot of batter here. What I have is a cookie sheet and parchment paper, no oil. And this is what I was talking about. So really, and because they don't spread, you can put them as close together as you choose. And what I do is bake them, cool them, and freeze them. And they, the last one I ate from Thanksgiving was last night. And I said, you know what? I'm making another set and this time I'll video it so that I can post it because this is a recipe that in case you missed it on her channel, you shouldn't miss. You can get pumpkin through most of the year. It's highly nutritious, even more so than banana because you have your carotenoids in any fruit or vegetable that's a dark orange or rich, deep yellow or red, and you want those. Those are very antioxidant and anti-inflammatory. See how easy this is? Whoops, okay. And I think that'll be it. All right. So what do I have here? I'm gonna flatten it a little bit so that I get a little bit more even of cooking, but also because I put these in a baggie, a freezer bag, a Ziploc freezer bag, and freeze it. You freeze them flat like this on a tray in the freezer and then you put them in the baggie. But um, they they fit in there better, I think, when they're just a little flattened, even though you may like them in a haystack shape better. And there's a little back here. Can you see I don't like wasting anything? Okay. All right. I'm putting them into a 325 degree oven. The muffins cook well, actually, in the recipe, it says the muffins cook for 30 minutes, cookies for 25. And yet, because they we've just seen they're the same volume of batter, I'm going to be checking them at 25. That's all I have to say. I'll remind you that I am a health coach as well as a cooking demonstrator. I have... Um, also written aging powerfully with Nan and it's my statement behind my mission to show people that even at 71 years old which I will be in five days the day after I run my second 10k race that um, we can age with power if we choose enough of the right things set up our value system this is the beginning of 2022 set up our value system, what's important and why. I wanna be around for another 10, 20, 30 years and help people see that they can stay healthy and strong into old age, square the curve, live, 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 boom, you die, rather than getting sicker and sicker and sicker and sicker for those decades before it's our time. And one way to do that is to love the food that loves you back and it's whole food, 
plant-based as often as possible. Bye. Have a great day because I know I'm going to.